Welcome to the JC Leak House. Today I want to give you a more detailed look at the bathroom on the third floor. This bathroom is not original to the house, but I'm going to need to do some more archaeological sleuthing to determine if I can what was here originally. I'm 99.99% confident that the way it looks now was a product of the big remodel in 1920 done by Eliza Kempner when she bought this house from the J.C. League estate. Eliza had 10 children who were grown by the time she bought this house as a widow and there were lots of grandchildren and great-grandchildren. I've met some of the great-grandchildren and they have fond memories of sleeping here on the third floor when staying summers with their grandmother. Adding a bathroom up here was probably high on Eliza's priority list. I knew right away that this, as it is now, was not original to the Clayton design. First, these large cabinets were built over a working transom window. Clayton would have never designed a house like that. The style of tile is also more common to the 1920s. I can see from the tile trim that a shower had been installed. I can't find a picture, but when I bought the house, a prefab shower was here, just like in the family bath but it had been installed in the same place as the original shower. It was seriously deteriorated, so it got removed in the first wave of demolition. The tub is in the original position, and so is the toilet. Unfortunately, this area is adjacent to a serious leak that occurred on the flat roof, and there appears to be damage under the tub. There was probably a plumbing leak, and I'm concerned that the floor under the tub is rotted. You can see the separation of this tile. This line running from the corner of the shower to the head of the tub is an indication that the floor is sagged under the weight of the concrete subfloor and of the tile. This could be a major problem since that tub is very heavy and when full of water and a person, it's going to be even heavier. I need to explore some more and get a good understanding of what's going on underneath before I can even think about proceeding with work in this bathroom. I'm just praying that the tile floor doesn't have to be removed. That, that would just crush me emotionally. The toilet looks original. It has a medium high tank, but unfortunately it's cracked and at least the bowl will have to be replaced. There's also this sign on it. It says, make sure to pull the handle back, otherwise it leaks downstairs. So something was going on with the plumbing for a long time and all of that will get addressed. Not what I'd hoped for, but structural problems have to be addressed before any of the fun stuff can be done. My long-term plan up here is to take out one of these two cabinets and use the footprint of the original tile to put in a bigger walk-in shower and uncover that transom. So this bath will have a nice shower and a tub. Let's jump forward a few months and look at the bathroom today. One section of the floor to ceiling cabinets has already been removed and you can see now that transom window that opens to the hall behind this wall. After demolition, I discovered something really fun. This is the original linoleum from 1893. See how it's made? The, it has these little pieces that were glued to burlap backing. It's really special to me because my dad owned a paint and wallpaper store. He also sold linoleum and as a child, I loved to go to work with him. When he cut the linoleum, he would measure up each side and cut a tiny slit in the linoleum and hold a chalk line that he would pop between the slits to see where he should cut. My job was to take a rag and clean off the chalk dust before he rolled it up for the customer. I'm going to take a section of this out and clean it up and frame it as a little piece of art for my wall. You can see how they just poured concrete over the linoleum to make a base for the tile. Here's the window I used to climb out onto the flat roof. And this is the door going into the cupola area of the attic. We'll explore that on another day. This bathroom also has a really pretty decorative radiator. All of the other radiators in the house were plain. This is the only fancy one. It was made by the American Radiator Company. I'm almost embarrassed to say that I owned this house for several months before I had a major revelation about this sink. You and I have both seen this sink before if you watch the video about the family bathroom. The sink is identical to the one in that bathroom. Remember in that video I talked about how each bedroom originally had its own sink? When the pink bathroom and this bathroom were added in 1920, the sinks in the bedroom were no longer needed. I believe they took one of those sinks and repurposed it here with a new spigot that's the exact opposite of the non-protruding original spigot. 
Now I have a dilemma. Do I leave it up here or do I return it to one of the bedrooms and do something else up here? That's a decision for another day and maybe a good topic for another video. What exactly is happening to this house? Is it preservation, restoration, or rehabilitation? And what exactly do we mean by those different terms? Here's another interesting find. These walls were originally covered with wallpaper. There are two layers, both in a brick pattern. You can see how wallpaper used to be hung over cheesecloth that was nailed to the wall. This is very inexpensive thin paper and it probably didn't hold up well. So the room was repapered right over the wallpaper. And I think it's funny that they found a nearly identical pattern instead of changing the look of this room. The wall itself was not plastered but covered with boards. These could either be just plain boards, tongue and groove, or shiplap. I won't know until I explore a little further. Remodeling shows that refer to every wall with boards on it as shiplap or like nails on the chalkboard to me. Let me show you the difference. Regular boards just butt up together and leave an open crack no matter how hard you push them together because wood shrinks over time as it continues to dry out. Tongue and groove has a different profile on each side of the board. One side is a slot or groove and the other is a tab or the tongue that slips into the groove. It makes a tighter seal because even if the wood shrinks, you see what you think is a gap, but the interior is still sealed. Shiplap is similar in that the edges have an L-shape notch to overlap and create a seal even when the wood shrinks. Shiplap gets its name because it was developed in shipbuilding and installed correctly can create a watertight seal. For that reason, it's more likely to be found on the outside of a house in harsh climates. Now that you know the difference, you too can cringe when the word shiplap is thrown around. There can be style variations like this beadboard. Beadboard, like this, is really tongue and groove with just a decorative element added. Actually, I think the beadboard is original to the room, mainly because the one clue I have is that the first layer of wallpaper comes down and meets the top of the beadboard. And I think that wallpaper was done originally when this linoleum was put down in 1893. There's also this modern quarter inch sheetrock that was installed on top of the wallpaper above the beadboard. I haven't decided whether to pull that down or leave it up for now, but this bathroom will be a functional bathroom, so that will kind of inform some of my decision making up here. That gets you current with this room, and as I dig into the structural issues, I'll get another video up, so be sure and subscribe so you can follow all the work going into saving this incredible house. I love to hear your thoughts and suggestions for what you're interested in seeing, so leave me a comment and be sure to like the video. It really helps other old house lovers find us on YouTube. The Lee Kempner house was too special to be owned by any one person. So a nonprofit was set up with a mission to return this amazing house to its original glory and make sure it never falls into decay again. The doors will be open to all who want to come visit and learn about its place in Galveston history. You can be a part of preserving this house for future generations by donating through our website, LeeKempnerHouse.org. You can also find a volunteer sign-up sheet on the website if you'd like to get directly involved. All the work that's being done is documented here on YouTube, and just by watching these videos, you're also playing a part in saving this incredible property. Thanks for watching, and we hope to see you next time here in Galveston, Texas at the amazing Lee Kempner House.